So Manolots is potentially one of the greatest demos I have played in the last couple of years. Well, granted, there haven't been that many demos. So props, first of all, to Manolots for providing a demo to a game, which is uh, pretty great because that gives us a good insight to a wonderful new game. But this video is all about reviewing this demo. With all the caveats and all the stuff in mind that a demo usually brings with it, I want to talk about the most promising medieval city builder game I've ever played. Um, maybe even more than medieval, maybe even one of the most promising survival um, city builder games. Um, just like, I really love these types of games. I've grown up with Anno uh, 1602 um, and I, I have been I've been very much invested into the Settler series as well and I've been playing like every kind of thing you can imagine from, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, Emperor Earth and all these kind of games and all Age of Empires obviously as well. So all these types of games have been a huge part of my past and I've I've generally just loved these games, but in the last couple of years it felt almost like there's been a little drain of these games. As we all know, the new Settlers game, for example, might face some problems. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But this game over here is what we want to talk about, Manor Lords. And in the back you can see one of my best attempts of making a little city. Um, so there are a couple of things I want to talk about. And the first thing being that I feel this game, even though just being in a demo, feels already extremely well balanced. And by balanced I mean the the way how the game is set up in terms of how much freedom you have in building and how much the game still does for you. So, for example, the zoning of areas is really nice because it gives you more control because the plots you are putting down are actually visible, but then again, the buildings are made themselves. So it's a little bit different from other games, for example, in Foundation, where you just zone out where they build the houses and then they build them right away. It might feel a bit more organic, but it obviously um, lacks a little bit of control. So I love the fact how they did this. I love the fact how easy and accessible the game just in general is. I love the fact how much control you have over the streets. Like, it's definitely one of the coolest ways I've seen um, a City Skylines type node based street builder for this type of game, where you usually think you don't need it, but in fact, it makes the whole thing so much more organic that it makes a lot of sense the moment you start using it. Another thing which I really love, obviously, is the graphics. Now, Normally these types of games don't need an insanely great graphics because you mostly play out of this kind of bird's eye perspective. But in this specific case over here you can even visit your little manor lord area and this looks specifically insane. It looks incredible. It has a graphics quality that is beyond anything I've seen in, a, in any other builder game. Um, and then again we have to you know, basically just quickly address all the other things and this is all the, you know, type of basic stuff you need for building games. Do you have resource chains? Of course you have. Do you have different types of buildings? Yes, you have. Like, you know, they upgrade. Do you have got a market? You have a market. You've got different types of, you know, forestry and all this type of stuff. Yes, you have. But the game goes a lot more into the details, which I feel like are uh, very much needed for a game like that. So let me give you a couple of examples. The first example is how the wildlife is treated. Now, there are some areas in the forest where you have some wildlife, uh, for example, to hunt down some deers and stuff. But now you do get an information how much deers are available in this area and you can set the amount of animals that the hunters will leave out um, to keep the population alive. And you can, you know, also kind of hunt them to death if you wish to. So, but then the population is gone. Um, another thing which I find great is the population actually moves through the forest. So that means they are not always in the same spot, which is so much more realistic because that means your hunters sometimes don't need to walk that far, but sometimes they need to walk far. So it kind of adds this extra layer of realism for hunting that it makes you feel like, okay, maybe it's more clever to have different types of food. So the game very early on pushes you towards um, having a very nice balance. And again, you hear it. There's a couple of times I will mention the balancing in the game. 
but the game will very early on um, prompt you to go for different types of uh, nutrition sources. And as you can see here uh, in, in my build speci specifically, I went for a lot of buildings um, in the middle where they have a lot of garden space because people can um, grow their own food, which I think is another very beautiful thing. They can't only grow food, by the way, or like vegetables and stuff. They can only have some chickens in there or some goats, which I believe is one of the coolest uh, things I've actually I haven't seen that quite yet in a game like that and it makes a lot of sense because when you start a new settlement people kind of want to provide nutrition themselves you know so they, they wouldn't be just living in their houses and do nothing um, they would technically try everything to survive so that's really cool I love also the fact that you have a different type of uh, you know factory it's maybe the wrong word but you have different types of buildings um, for firewood and for normal wood which also comes in very handy because you will need a lot of firewood if you have seen other games um, like Father Frontier on my channel, there has been a, a mechanic that is pretty much the same as in here, so you always have to fight the seasons as well. So in summer, spring and so on, you have to make sure that you have enough food for the winter times. And that is another thing that I find super realistic because in most other games, you only have like a very constant inflow of resources. And once you have a big plus, you can go on like that, you know, you know, okay, I produce two times as much as my people consume. So you can just leave it going until you have more people that, you know, the production equals the consumption. But in this game, you also have to think forward because obviously, Obviously, hunting is always possible throughout the whole year, but for example, the um like for example vegetables and stuff they, they just grow in summer or they grow in different types of seasons. So you can even have your fields um use different types of seeds for the different seasons and then make sure that you have a constant inflow of resources but then again you always have to ensure that in the winter times you have enough food so what i did at a, at a certain point in this build when i had enough uh, food production in summer i basically stopped hunting for deers and stuff uh, completely to ensure that they don't first of all i had the workforce which was great because i could then put them also on the fields and then in the winter they can go hunt and this is something that is so real Realistic because that's how it has been in the past as well in the middle time especially that people change their jobs according to, to the seasons and so it's another layer of management that you have to keep in mind by constantly changing the jobs that people have and I really love the fact how this game is set up However, there's obviously so much more that could be done with this in the future. So I can see so much more coming into this game. Um, not only obviously decoration, which is something I personally, as like a very creative builder type of person, uh, loves, but I also find that there is so much good stuff already set up, just like, you know, most of the things like with the water flows and stuff over here, you can see, by the way, I haven't talked about that, but also how the resources are tackled in this game is something I truly love that you have this underground water and you can't put like wells everywhere so you have to really think about where is the water resources and stuff so there it is so well thought through that i hope in the future this this pattern continues into other things like how this how people could be educated you know I, I wish to have the chance to educate people not only being a hunter but maybe you can give them like three different kind of skills like hunter farmer and carpenter for example i don't know but then this person would be able to switch between between these through uh, three jobs you know constantly whether the season that requires a different skill set they can use it so you can maybe set up um almost like a little yeah almost like a route for this person like a, a yearly plan a schedule so to say you know can can put them onto the farms from let's say april to august and then from august to I don't know, November, they are doing some carpenter stuff and then from November to February, they do the hunting and from February to April, they do carpenter stuff again. So just kind of schedule the people as well. That would be amazing because that's something how you can use the workforce a lot more clever because I figured the workforce um, is one of the main bottlenecks in this game so you can't really build that many houses in no time because also wood and stuff is there so i always constantly had that struggle of workforce and you know uh, all the other stuff so um it, it's been it's been a wonderful time playing this game i really did enjoy building in this game so much um i wanted to make more videos of it but because there was no saving uh 
you know, capability in this game. I couldn't save the game yet, as everybody couldn't. Um, it just, you know, I didn't have the time to play longer than, for example, two and a half hours, which this playthrough over here was, um, to, to finish. Uh, so many other people had the chance to play it for eight hours straight or so. Obviously, you got a little bit further into the game. Um, but uh, on the other hand, I started every single evening, I started another one. So I had an idea how to start the game best. And it gave me an even better overview of how well balanced the game is. Now, let me hear in the comments what your thoughts were on the game. Have you played the demo? Haven't you played the demo? Uh, if you haven't played the demo, I highly suggest to click the video to the top right at the end of the video. Because there is my first attempt, like my first look, which gives gives you a better uh, idea of the game um, than the speed build. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this little review. I can't wait to see more of this game. From all the simulation city builder games I've played this year, this is by far my favorite. And I could see me really make a huge series on that one as soon as it hits. And I really do hope that uh, they continue having demos after demos just to have people giving feedback. I'm also very active answering on his Twitter channel, um, on, on Manolad's Twitter channel. You can always answer a couple of you know queries where they ask for certain development stages and stuff. I really love this. It feels so organic. It feels so good. It's super well made and I can't wait to have more of this game. Anyways, as said, if you want to see more of this game, please click to the top right now and uh, uh, yeah, have a good time. Have a good weekend. See you soon and goodbye.